Welcome back. This is section 8.4, Conservation of Momentum, and in your textbook, this is section um, 7.4. Momentum, remember, is mass times velocity. So let's say that I have a bowling ball going down a bowling alley, and that bowling ball has a certain mass, and it, it's going down at a certain speed, and it hits the bowling pins, which, are st which have a certain mass and have no speed at all. What happens when they touch? What's going to happen is that the momentum from the bowling ball is going to be transferred into the pins. Now the masses are different, but remember momentum is mass times speed. So let's say that I have two pool balls. You've got a pool ball and a second pool ball. Now the white cue ball on a pool table is heavier than any of the other pool balls. There's a density difference. So the pool ball is heavier, even if it's the same size, it's, it's, it's more massive. And since it's more massive, when the white ball strikes any of the other balls, the mass times velocity of the cue ball is transferred into the other ball. And since the mass is less, usually, depending on the angles and how many balls are hit, let's see if you just hit one ball, the mass would be, the momentum is transferred into the second ball and the second ball goes flying faster than the cue ball hit it. Okay, so that's, that's one thing. You're going to see the bowling works the same way. The bowling pins fly faster because the bowling pins are less massive than the bowling ball. So in this section, we're going to be talking about conservation, which means the same amount of momentum is at the beginning of an impact as as the end of an impact. Okay, so um, we can see that in a lot of different ways. The force or impulse that changes a momentum, if you remember an impulse is force uh, exerted over a specific amount of time. So time times force is impulse. Impulse changes momentum. All right, so if, it, if the mass doesn't change, then the speed will change. An impulse will change the speed. You can catch a ball or you can throw a ball. That's, that's going to be a difference, okay? So anything inside an object doesn't count. It's only forces outside the object. You have to look at a force outside the system, so that force times a time, or the impulse outside a system can make something go. So if you're inside a sled, or you're in a sled, or in a car, you can't make it go by pushing on the inside of the car. If you're sitting on the steering, you know, pushing on the steering wheel, the car is not going to go forward because you're part of the car system. You would have to have an external force. So someone would have to push the sled from the back, not one that's riding in the sled. Okay, pushing on the inside wouldn't do any good. You know that. So, so like the bouncing air molecules inside a bounce a, a basketball is not making that ball go anything. You have, if you're going to change its momentum, you have to change it with a force external to it. So internal forces cancel out. External forces cause a change in momentum or an impulse. So momentum before firing a cannon is zero. After firing, the net momentum is still zero because the momentum of the cannonball is equal to the and opposite to the momentum of the cannon. Okay. Now, the cannon weighs different than the cannonball. The cannonball is, is less massive than the cannon. That means it's going to go faster. So it would be MV for the cannonball. But the cannon is MV. All right, so they will have the same momentum, both of them. The kick of the cannon and the kick of the ball is the same. It's just that the ball is smaller and will go faster. So a, if you shoot a gun, shoot a rifle, the bullet that's propelled out of the barrel of the gun is going to go with the same amount of momentum as the gun was. The gun kicks back, but it's more massive than the bullet. And so, so you end up with a conservation or momentum is conserved. If you remember, momentum is, a, is the product of mass times velocity, and velocity has a direction to it. Velocity is speed in a certain direction. That means momentum is also directional. Momentum is a vector. So the momentum can go left or the momentum can go right. 
And if you were to have, say, the kink of a gun, you're going to end up with the, the, the bullet going in one direction and the gun going in the other direction. They're going to be equal to each other. They're going to cancel each other. They're opposite and equal. That's where we get the idea of conserved. Conserved means it doesn't change. If you have a certain momentum, which you remember is equal to the mass times velocity of, say, the bowling ball, it has a certain momentum, you've got a certain mass and a certain speed, and then it, go, it impacts, the bowling ball stops, and then the bowling ball, uh, all the momentum is transferred into the next object with a smaller mass, well then the velocity of that smaller mass is gonna have to be bigger because the, these two things are gonna be equal to each other. These are identical. Momentum before a crash and the momentum after a crash. So the law of conservation of momentum says that the momentum before an impact is going to be the same as the momentum after an impact. So Newton's second law states that if no net force is exerted on a system, no acceleration occurs. Remember, F equals ma. So if there's a force on a mass, then it accelerates. But if there's no force, then the mass doesn't accelerate. Well, if it doesn't accelerate, does it change its momentum? If there's no outside force, does it change its momentum? So let's see, you've got, you've got a mass and it's got a, let's say it has a velocity. If I don't change it, do, if I don't have a force, then I have a zero times time equals a, a momentum or a change in momentum. Okay, so if this is zero, then this is zero, which means there's no change in momentum. So momentum, it, change in momentum would require a force. So if there is no force, then there's no change in momentum. That means that if a tennis ball hits a tennis bracket and, and comes back out, all it's doing is bouncing. It's not, there's no force acting on it. All it's doing is redirecting its, um, its velocity, then whatever the, whatever the momentum at the beginning is going to be the same momentum at the end. That's if there is no loss at all in the tennis racket. If the tennis racket were, say, perfectly elastic, then it would be exactly equal. Most of the time in reality, a tennis racket or some kind of a bounce is going to slow something down, and you end up with a something like this, where a ball is going to um, start bigger and bounce less and less and less because some of that, say, is warming the floor and making a sound, and so it's losing some of its energy. But if there is no change in force, there's no change in momentum, and the momentum is conserved. So what does the law of conservation of momentum state? That the, the momentum, or the mass times velocity of a system, is the same before an impact and after an impact and that's what conservation means. It's conserved or it stays the same.